pull my phone up. Hello and welcome to Solitude. My name's Liam and I've got a very special group of guests today. This is my second podcast. It's a long time coming since I've jumped back into this, but I've got local Perth band Stem Stella with me today. How's it going, guys? Hey, how you going? Hey, hey. good. Good. That's very good. good. Um, how about everyone just gives me a quick introduction? No worries. Start with you, Dave. Uh, I'm Dave. I'm the drummer. Yeah, I'm Bevan. I um do lead vocals and some guitar. Uh Corbin and uh just lead guitar. I'm Dave and I play bass. I'm Dylan and I play like synth and like sound produce stems. You could yeah. produce and <laughs> yeah. nice, yeah, nice. Quite a lot. Cool. Well you guys have got a pretty good setup by the look of it. So tell me about um how it came to be, how you how you guys got together as a band and how long you've been going now. Yeah. Um, so originally it was like a solo project for me and, um, I had a whole bunch of songs and me and Dill, we'd get in the studio and we just try to figure out all these different songs and how we're going to record them. And, um, so we released like two or three songs, um, a couple years ago, probably three years ago now. So who am I in criminal, which you can find on Spotify. And then, um, a bit of time went past and we're like, no, nah, there's, it would be way better if we brought this as a band project and mm. um i like all my best friends are like the best musicians for their instruments that i know so i got them all in on it and um now we've got the band and yeah it's just been awesome no so so all all you guys were mates before you got together as a band as well yeah mm. yeah. yeah so um, yeah yeah nice that that really yeah, helps hey cuz it's like yeah. you know instead of it just being a a thing to get together to play music you're also hanging out with your buddies hey yeah we, we've all like and over the years and stuff prior to um forming the band together we've all had our own little side projects and um yeah right only and stuff like that but it's it's all sort of led to a uh, stem seller at the moment so yeah yeah nice yeah i checked out your um your three singles on spotify is, is that all you've got at the moment just the three official tracks out Mm -hmm. yeah at the moment yes yeah yeah and um man i've got to say like production's pretty good and um you're telling me that you, you guys are at the studio where you recorded as well right now yeah, sure. yeah. What, just... what's that what's that studio called again uh soak sounds yeah whereabouts is that one uh north andalup wa so it's kind of just, just south of perth about an hour's drive south out in the hills yeah, nice, right? I've never been out that way, but must be um, you know, quite picturesque out there. I'm imagining out in the hills. Man. Yeah, yeah. It, you can like you get if things get like you need a break. Yeah, go for a walk out to the rock and you see the whole the whole region out to the ocean. It's um, nice. Yeah, it's breathtaking. Mm -hmm. really who who runs that place? This Me. guy. Me. Oh, that's your place, is it? <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. So do you have any other bands come in there and practice or record yeah. at all? No, uh, yeah, I've recorded quite a few bands. Yep. Yeah. Um this this particular place is kind of only about a year old because I've right. it's been built. Um but prior to that I was kind of just had like a this elaborate setup in my old man's theatre room and that's where Bevan and I did those other two tracks. <laughs> but the latest one was done here. Yeah, yeah, nice. Your latest track, um, next to you, right? Yeah, yeah. that was cool. Yeah, yeah, sweet. I'd go say it's probably my favorite of the three. So nice job there, guys. I think you're definitely, um, you know, improving, which which is a great thing. Um, you know, if you're just kind of up and coming and still kind of finding your feet. But I was kind of getting like a little bit of like a, you know, I, I felt there was a little bit of like um psychedelic influence in there, which was really cool and obviously like really popular in Perth. So um, you know, I think that that's a really, um, important thing to kind of clue into if you get, if you get into the scenes that are big here, but also, I, yeah. I don't know, I was kind of feeling like, um, you know, the band Kingswood. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of getting a little bit of a Kingswood vibe there too, mixed with like, you know, you kind of stereotypical, um, psych stuff like Tame and Par a little bit, but, but what other yeah. stuff are you, are you guys influenced by? 
Oh, that's the thing, man. Like we're all quite as individuals. We're all. I would say we're all quite. We got a lot of similarities, but we also have a lot of differences. If yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Um. So I sort of grew up on more of like a heavier side, um, of playing style and listening style. Um, yeah. I can't speak for you boys, but um, what you're hearing yeah. is probably the exact mesh of our influences five ways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it definitely yeah. does sound like that. Like there's a lot of kind of genre bending going on. It's it's kind of it kind of is hard to define like what genre your guys' music would be. And I think that's what's pretty cool about it, you know, because it, it, it really does kind of just sound like a melting pot of genres. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, and that's hard to achieve and, and to make it sound good at the same time too, which I think you guys have, have definitely done there, especially on your latest track. So congr- congrats on that. Um, yeah, is, there, is, there a, is there more music that you guys are working on? If, if you got your own studio, I guess that would be pretty, um, pretty uh, easy to, lay down some yeah. tracks yeah 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 that's so, what we're doing tonight yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we're here. Putting, yeah. nice putting guide tracks and the drums for the next single yeah yeah cool cool and um you got shows lined up then for like a the next single coming out or just kind of some like shows preparing for for that at all it will be a couple sprinkled in um yeah but yeah, probably we'll we'll book a a big single launch or a single launch tour or something. Um, but yeah, this, next, launch, this next track that we're going to release is probably, I I mean, two or three times better than the previous one. So. Ooh, big cool, big yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Feeling cool. Yeah. We, we vibe it. Like, we obviously vibe um, next, next year, year as yeah. well. But yeah. like, um, that, yeah, it's that's the beauty of the more we get out, the better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, nice. We're, we're just getting started. Yeah. And we're yeah, definitely yeah. fine with our sound and everything like that. Yeah. Really? Um, and an EP would be like, an EP launch would be like on the cards as well, possibly. So mm-hmm. it, we'll see what the future holds. Um, really depends on how we go about releasing the tracks. Because mm-hmm. we'll yeah. probably record three or four more. And then mm-hmm. we either do singles or we do an EP. So either yeah. way, everyone's getting more music from us soon. <laughs> sure. <laughs> definitely. Sure. Nice, nice. Well, I'll definitely be checking it out when it, when it pops up. So... You got one. You've got one stream from me at least. Um, <laughs> so, uh, whereabouts are you guys playing most? I think I saw on your um Instagram maybe that you played at the indie bar in Scarborough recently. Was it? Am I right there? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We did our single launch there. Yeah. Um, and we've played a couple gigs like in the kind of usual venues you would play around in Perth, so Mojo's and Clancy's and yeah. Um, yeah so just all those kind of venues around um which yeah, one's the- your favorite to play at what do you guys reckon that's a good question i love indie bar dude <laughs> indie bar sound yeah. like on stage was yeah. amazing man like, yeah I, i've played so many venues where i'm just like oh well can't hear myself but i'm still having to this time like mm. i could hear everything on stage mm. and like that was yeah crazy, but yeah, they've yeah. got a really good backline set up too. You can basically choose whatever type of amp, like the three best types of amps available. You just oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't have to bring an amp in, which is helpful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I loved my AC30. It's heavy as anything. Yeah. And uh, got, and they had an AC30 on stage ready to go. So, <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah. Car. yeah. Oh, that's, that's nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the the other thing that's cool about the indie bar is that it's it's got a I, I hate this word now but I'm gonna say it anyway I'm gonna say it anyway it's got a cool vibe um like <laughs> Dude, it does it, you know yeah. what I mean like um it's been around for a long time and it's got like a core audience that I think are like happy yeah. to kind of just rock up and see whoever's playing and they'll, they'll just kind of like be content with whoever's on the stage, um, yeah, which yeah. is like really helpful when you're an up and coming band, you know, because sometimes you can't attract as many um, of your own fans and to try and find um, more organically, you know, you've got to hope that you find um, random people rocking up to your show. Hey, but I think that the indie bar is like a place in Perth. You can kind of count on for that, that there will be random yeah. people rocking up just to see who's playing, you know, um, and they're cool. usually people there, like, just, you know, coming to have a good time, which is, again, what you want from a local show, hey? Mm-hmm. Um, but 
Mojo's is, is a bit like that too, I reckon, especially because it's yeah. just kind of got like that little, little bit more isolated away from the other stuff and kind of like the big yeah. one out there. Um, yeah. Any any prospects for other places you want to try that you haven't been to yet? Oh, well, our goal yeah. is um, Freer Social, actually. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, Freer Social. I actually I haven't seen a show there yet. Um, I really want to, but um, I've oh, driven... Yeah, then, yeah. Yeah, I've driven past it a bunch of times and I think like, man, that looks really cool. And then I just, I need to get around to seeing a show, but just not, yeah. it's just not happened. But have you guys been to shows there before? It's always so good, man. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. can pack a lot of people Page into that people. place without it being frustratingly busy. Yeah. I've so heard it. Like 100, 800, 800 so cap. Yeah. 800 yeah. they fit in there, do they? Yeah. yeah. Um, I've I've heard it's got like an indoor and outdoor part to it. Is is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Most so there's like a big like theater hall inside. Yeah. Like on the outside, they usually have like DJs and stuff, and there's like food and the bar and whatnot. But then if you like, if they do like events, they like open up the hall inside, and I think that's where they have like the bands come in and play, and mm. all the shows go on in there, and it's just such a nice like open space good sound mm. i might be wrong as well like i believe it was a venue before it got refurbished already and apparently yeah. they stripped all the floorboards yeah and then refurbished it and then replaced the same floorboards just because yeah. of the quality of it, yeah. it did have another name about five six years ago i think i can't remember what it was called but it, yeah. it definitely did have a different name jazz club or something yeah something like that yeah, yeah. it was like an yeah. old yeah Who did you say did you say Fly by night, yeah. I think yeah, that's what that rings called. a bell. It's like a jazz thing, like, but they had a, a huge, like, uh, local muso, um, following where early bands before they had had like enough traction to get other gigs, that was always the first stopover for them, yeah. Yeah, nice, yeah. Shout outs for your social, we'll see you soon, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, this. Well, if you guys, what do you reckon's the, the most amount of people you've played in front of right now? Well, we um, well, the single launch was probably our tenth ever gig. Yeah, and we Robin. got it to two sixty. Two sixty, not bad yet. So you, you yeah. reckon that at some point you guys could get up to eight hundred? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That's um, that's the goal. One day. Goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah awesome. Next year, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be nice. So how how are you guys going about trying to grow an audience this day and age? This is actually something that I kind of um. I don't know if, uh, well, I think it was Corbin who, who um, reached out to me um, just from seeing the channel, but sometimes I, I talk on on my um, YouTube channel about the, this sort of thing, like growing an audience and Perth bands and, and Australian bands that are like um, getting bigger and how they how they go about doing that. I kind of find that interesting. Um, but but how, do you, how are you guys going about like navigating that? It's, 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 um, it's, it's like a ever growing and changing way of, um getting an audience nowadays what are you guys doing about it i mean deal you're like yeah. bevan and deal like you guys are really good at yeah the... um so i've kind of um with all the bands that i produce i have like a uh not really a formula but like a certain way of kind of getting to a a stage as a beginner band where you can kind of play to 150 people um and it just involves like a social media campaign like obviously just being really prepared with your um all your socials and and the timing of your release and um mm. trying to keep the height and designing the height till it gets to a point where you can sell as much tickets as possible and then like make sure you get all the photos of the big crowd and then that helps you sell the tickets for the next one and I don't know. I've just kind of developed a bit of a system that um, yeah, nice. Shared with obviously these guys, and um, I've helped Little Guilt a lot with um, their their trajectory as well. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah so it sounds timing, yeah. Timing the content release is so important, and having stuff prepared that you're preparing so that you always have stuff ticking over. Yeah, because yeah. the moment you like two or three months with nothing, you lose people's interest and yeah um, the other part of it is adaptability too because yeah. as much as we don't 
want to, um, the reality is, is that probably going to have to start utilizing the TikTok al- algorithm because it's yeah. just so powerful. Um, yeah. So you guys haven't, uh, you haven't ventured out onto TikTok yet. We have a plan. Yeah. That's yeah. There's a, there's a, oh, dude, there's, we're cutting yeah. up all of lot. Like, we're just yeah. been going through memes like for the last yeah. few months. Like what, like literally what in, the, we, in the what, stage what of what we've got to work with, you know, yeah. Yeah. as well. Like, uh, um, like in this day and age, everything moves so fast. Like you're saying, everything's always updating and changing. And so, like, it, I know, even if you have a good quality product, it's um, you have to be on to, on the ball still with mm. everything Dylan just said, because unfortunately, there's so much content out there right now. Mm. Um, you have to yeah. sort of find a way to stick out. The and, market's um, completely yeah. saturated. Yeah. yeah, you can't be yeah. posting all the time. You got to make sure you're posting at the right time of the week, the right the right day, and the right time of day. And to really, it's, you're just uh, at the whims of the social media algorithms, unfortunately. Yeah. So if you can design a single release and a launch and a campaign around those algorithms to maximize it, then that's kind of the the best way to go about it, Mm. in my opinion. Obviously, as well as doing like interviews and all of that kind of stuff, Mm -hmm. just yeah. It's a necessary prepared. <laughs> I guess if you That's like exactly listening... what I was saying to um another guy who I spoke to on this channel about TikTok. He called it a necessary evil too. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the unfortunate reality. It's yeah, it's a powerful tool. Yeah. yeah I, for me, like I, I cannot stand that <laughs> the application yeah. TikTok itself. Yeah. I haven't um, downloaded it. I've, I've never that. I've never downloaded it, yeah. but um yeah. Like I get why it works and like um, I'll admit like the, the scrolling through, like I do it on YouTube sometimes, like YouTube shorts. Yeah. Um, right. But like, thankfully I, I think like that's kind of a little bit more tailored to my um, interests. Yeah. Whereas yeah, like, um, whereas like TikTok, I think like, it's just kind of like mind numbing and it's just like, everyone's just trying to be silly and do the same dance all the time on it. Yeah. And, yeah. go over the same jokes all the time i'm just like oh man i just cannot get my head around why people want to do that but hey you know yeah, like if, if you get voice, the like, AI voice, dude. Um, this if, and that <laughs> this and that like yeah what yeah optimistic <laughs> can of tomatoes <laughs> yeah yeah i just can't i can't get my head around it but hey like it's working for so many people nowadays so i think like you said the necessary evil that you have to dip your toes into um mm. if you if you you know, are serious about trying to make it. Um, mm. <clears throat> how are you guys going with um? What I would probably think now is maybe like uh, a step back from there and and just kind of getting noticed nationally. Um, and you know, I guess throughout Western Australia, as opposed to um, you know, just on social media. Have you been able to like, um, you know, make a Triple J on Earth page? Has there been any like, um? hits there at all um yeah we've had hits on our unearth page um i think uh have you got any of natural. the uh green or, or red drums on there at all yeah mm. uh uh no no drums yet no drums uh, yet um, it's I understandable. Think, uh, that, yeah that they're looking for consistency and if yeah. we release our last release was three years ago and then we've just released this one so I don't think there an unearth review on one of the old ones. Yeah, yeah. I think both of them, both of them previously like got review, like really good reviews from Triple J. Yeah, like like some presenters, Um, they gave a, they gave a little um, synopsis of what they thought. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. for sure. Well, that's pretty good. Really positive too, and um, like I think they're probably like busy with all the festivals going on and whatnot Mm -hmm. at the moment, but yeah, um, not quite yet on like the new track, but I think our future tracks for sure when we start releasing like consistently and um like they i feel like when people start to see how much quality we have just in the backpack Mm. and we start putting it out um i think people will be quite shocked um Mm. and that's what we're aiming for like really professional really like catchy interesting fun songs you Um, just have to be so good they can't ignore you yeah, and and I think yeah. we literally have that. I can't like, I can't wait for our music mm. to get released. Um, we have some really cool demos 
a lot of demos and a, and a full set list that we haven't even recorded yet. Um, so there's so much coming. We just got to get it down and yeah. out. And I think that's what's going to catch people's attention. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we actually, I, I pitched next to you to Triple J and all the presenters. You just like emailed that. them or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and, and obviously um, applied for playlist considerations with Spotify, the curators and all that. Yeah. But even if the song's really good, like we our last release was three years ago and they're probably not going to look at it. If yeah. They see it's almost like you're starting fresh when it's three years ago, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, they're probably not it's even gonna, enough, but probably yeah. not going to look at you until you've released three songs like mm. in the in the same mm. year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that they 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 may well look at you um if you if you have like a if you bring a lot of numbers to like Spotify yeah. for example, yeah. if you bring a lot of numbers to their platform when your song's released, yeah. then they'll look at it like it'll pop up on their radar. This is what I've heard at least um can happen yeah. like for example, if you guys um release another song um next week and then um i think i i had a look at your um instagram and what how many followers are you guys at right now uh about almost like 1.5k so if mm. if all of your instagram followers listen to your one song and you got um 1500 listens in like you know in in like eight hours like that would pop up on their radar and they'd probably yeah. like do something about that but the, the problem is is like you know not all of your followers are gonna listen to your song unfortunately um yeah. and you might only get like you know 200 people click on it in the first eight hours which is still like i mean i'd if i released a song and 200 people listened to it in like the first eight hours that it was out i'd be stoked but um yeah. that's not enough for spotify to notice it yet like you have to pull a lot of numbers in um yeah, for, for them sure. to notice it hey and like i think you said um you've just got to like build. And I think if you consistently release, like mm -hmm. if, if you like, from what you guys are saying, it sounds like you have, you know, maybe seven or eight, 10 songs, maybe lined up, ready to go in, in the near future. So if, you know, you keep releasing one every few weeks or so, I guess you just hope that it builds to the point where maybe one day you, you do have like 1.5 K people click on that song when it debuts. Is that, and that's yeah. what you guys are hoping for, right? Eh? Yeah definitely 100%, yeah. just get on the grind and write songs and release them and record them in like a real short time frame and just keep that momentum up mm -hmm. in the next year or two i guess the other way that um sticks out to me is um of getting noticed is like connections with other bands and artists as well have you guys been able to well you've got this studio where you invite people in so i suppose you'd have connections to other bands to some degree but have you have you guys yeah, gone there have you have you um been uh reached oh. out to for any like support gigs or anything like that dave yeah <laughs> no, that's, that's a dave yeah i just remembered <laughs> i completely forgot about this so my uh my birthday this year was my 30th and uh i ran my own uh mini music festival here at the block here nice um and we had uh 12 bands five djs market stalls kebab band we had about 200 people um man this that's a that's an amazing birthday. 30th birthday Dude, <laughs> yeah it's one of the best nights ever wasn't yeah it? it's that sounds, that's like even better than a 21st birthday man that's yeah <laughs> oh, yeah man. we spent it was a, hectic we spent man. a week and a half building a proper stage in concrete oh wow Liam, like Liam, you have, you have to see the stage man it was like proper festival spec it's, and wait is the stage still there? it was looking over the yeah, huge yeah, it's still, yeah. Of black speakers it's still, yeah. and all these subs and everything and the like, bands man like it's oh probably, they're so good so, too it's like, such no, a diverse set of bands what like, so what yeah. bands did you have play so the we had uh, see if I can remember off the top of my head. So we had Little Guilt, Sprinter, Spicy Water, um, Last Cocker, oh, yeah. uh, Stem Stella. Uh, yeah, I think I've heard of Stem Stella. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Look out for those guys. They're epic. Yeah. 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 Soft Juice, uh, Finn Alexander and the Forever Party, Stacy Ann, and Calm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I, th I think yeah. I've heard about. I think I've heard about half of them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So um. Yeah. We've got lots of connections. Um, yeah. Nice. Me and around the Perth scene for 
quite some time playing um in a band called Indigo. Oh um, yeah, yeah, I remember Indigo. Yep. Yeah, these guys have been playing in bands as well. So, what other bands like, have you guys been in back in the day? Anything that took off? Uh, well, when I say took band- off. I mean, like you know, maybe got like five hundred or a thousand followers. <laughs> Yeah, on social media, we we had a we had a band that was like we had gigs that like through Indigo that we were like packed, but we never jumped on the social side of things. Like yeah. you know how we're talking about TikTok before and how it's we're like nah 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 we were like that, but to the nth degree where we're like nah let's not do any social stuff at all, and then look how that turned out, I guess. But yeah, right. we we with Technical Dream Machine, um, yeah, Mars on Holiday they were also. Sick. Technical Great Dream band. Machine were awesome. Yeah, yeah, they were one of my favorite bands. I seem to remember that name being around. What what like what years were you guys doing Technical Dream Machine? Probably yeah, probably what, five years ago four, maybe. Four to yeah. five years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was I was at a um local radio station about five or so years ago. Um and. Yeah, I, I had a lot of like local Perth stuff pop up on there that I saw. I feel like I saw that name. So, no way, cool. Yeah, so yeah. Cool. I, but I'm yeah. very proud of the band. Like, I think Should we be. made some really cool music. It's it just unfortunate. Sick. It just fizzled really? out, did it? Still got plenty of time. Oh, yeah, I could no come way. back. Reunion. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Nick, oh, I... If you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> did, did you, did you release music on, online? Did you get it out on we... Spotify or anything? We actually got a, we got a, through Wham, they recorded yeah. a demo, for, uh, demos from the, uh, Wheat Belt. from the Wheat Belt. And, um, that was on, that's on Spotify. And then we did some recording at Poon's Head Studio. Um, so we, yeah, we nice. have like two fully fleshed out tracks. So that's what I mean. We actually could release something in the future. Yeah. So, well, you never know nowadays with the internet, it's on there. So it could just randomly take off. You just don't know, do you? <laughs> yeah. Who <laughs> released our track? Maybe we're just waiting. <laughs> yeah. We're just waiting for the perfect time, man. Yeah. You could, you yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I feel like I, I haven't heard, I haven't heard of a story of that happening that I can think of at the top of my head where like someone released something um, recently that just took off online. But surely that's going to happen. Like, I mean, yeah. I can think of stories. Um, that I've heard of, uh, like back in the day, where that's happened. Like, I mean, one that comes to mind is you know, do you know the emo band American Football? Yes. Like they released that album in like '99 or something, and no one cared about it. And then like college radio played it, and then it just like took off. Or um, yeah. did you guys ever see the documentary Searching for Sugar Man? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy in yeah. um Africa. Yes. Yeah. 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 So he was this so, musician, his name's Rodriguez and uh, he's American yeah. and he released, I think he released two albums, but like his first album that he released, like no one in America cared about it. And then he released it internationally and it like took off in South Africa and he didn't <laughs> even, he didn't even know. And like, it was some like uh label cover up where they, um where the label saw it like, taking off in south africa and they said like they must have just said to themselves like well let's not tell him otherwise he will st- we'll have to make a new contract and actually have to pay him yeah. heaps um oh. and then like he's he like sold more vinyl records than elvis in south in south africa or something something crazy, <laughs> crazy. Um, but yeah i feel like you know maybe technic- what, what was your band called technicolor dream machine that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. They could be the next Rodriguez, man. You never know. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> but hey, now let's um, get back on the STEM Stella. Um, yeah. Because that's what that's what we're here about. But um, so you guys are working on um recording some new stuff. Um, we should keep our eye out. It might be out soon. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I, I think we'll probably book the launch around summertime. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good time to gig summer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm probably pencil in a rough like two to four month period yeah, yeah this next these next few months is a good time to sort of um compound down and try to get you know as much done as we can and mm. then we'll have a bit more content to work with so to speak nice yeah. yep yep and social media you guys are all over like all that all that obviously instagram facebook yeah we yeah. try to be D- yeah. Dill's really it was really good at it and um he, he's passing his knowledge onto a few of us as well because so we can all spread the workload yeah um, yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's such yeah. hard work. It's just too much to do. Like, <laughs> we just, like I'll create this social media campaign and then mm. it's almost a full-time job to create the content mm. for it. So it's like, yeah. I've got a, a big list and delegate to the boys. Yeah. And, like, oh, who wants? wants to write a caption today like... <laughs> trying to look cool and trying to you know trying to be interesting online it's a full-time job yeah yeah. So hard. <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean like if yeah. you think back in the day though musicians would have killed to have this sort of ability to gain okay. an audience mm-hmm. so you know I, I, we can't take it for granted what we what we have um so but like yeah, we were saying are. earlier now everyone's doing it it's like the market's so saturated so you, uh, it's, it's great to stand it out. Is- yeah and it is cool to see so many like so much like live uh, after the pandemic and stuff like there's actually so much live music going on at the moment you can mm. guarantee if you go out on a weekend you'll find a live band out yeah somewhere. yeah yeah like, and the is, the perth is scene cool. is the perth scene's so good like we're so lucky here when I mean, you have you know so many million people living here but we just keep popping out heaps of good bands and, and musicians and like just yeah. every year it seems like a new one pops up that's like oh man this band's like really good and they like start taking off a bit and maybe you get like play on triple j a bit and get in the hottest 100 or whatever and yeah maybe get yeah. nominated for an ari in a few years or whatever but you know it's just so good here in perth so you know we definitely can't take that for granted yeah yeah i don't know about yourself but like when i hear about when i hear bands from perth on triple j or whatnot i have a little bit of proudness i'm like ah oh, perth yeah like, same yeah, nice yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah definitely i think we have that sort of like you know oh they come from where i'm from you know they're on yeah, my yeah. team sort of attitude i think everyone kind of everyone has that here. <laughs> yeah. so we all kind of like look out for each other it's like um you know yeah. it, there's a lot more like pull um pushing each other up as opposed to like pulling down, which I think can happen yeah. a little bit on social media nationally and internationally. Like people kind of want to shoot you down a bit, but yeah. Perth. I saw this you know, the other day. Like it was like um, the people at the bottom uh, like take from each other to get to the top. But then once you're at the top, they collaborate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's like, interesting. With ideas and mm-hmm. stuff yeah. like that. It's, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. Well, hey guys, it's been a pleasure um chatting with you and um thanks for coming on. And um, like I was saying earlier, this is only the second time I've done it, so I hope it it went okay and that I um was able to um keep you guys interested with my conversation skills. But um <laughs> no, it's no, been really good, Liam. Good. Yeah. yeah. And like I really appreciate the content you put out on your YouTube oh, channel. Thanks. That, that that sort of um uh, that that shows what perf has and um it gives it like literally proper like information i love stats and things like that so yeah. cheers for that yeah and i appreciate that you, that you um reached out and uh um like the channel too but i'm 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 thinking about doing this a little bit more it has been it has been a little tricky to like find the time um to to do this and and also just find people and and bands and artists that want to sit down for a quick chat but i think i feel like today went pretty well so i'll chuck yeah, it online sure. see what people say and you know, hopefully, um, you know, someone on on one of my subscribers comes across this video and then checks out your music and then you know maybe rocks up to one of your gigs. So, I'd love for yeah, that sort of thing to happen. Person in the world. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. I've got to wrap it up. Um, but yeah, I'll uh be checking out your next song when it's out soon. Hopefully. Yeah. Roger. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers, man. Liam. Cheers, Cheers Liam. Liam.